Hey guys, it's episode 50 of the Movement Project. It's a special day for me because I've been doing this for 50 days straight. So today I thought I'd take the opportunity to go ahead and talk about what I've been alluding to in all of these presentations. I've got three things for you guys, and they're what I believe CrossFitters neglect. So number one is that bilateral movements create asymmetries, and asymmetries lead to injuries. And so the problem with that is um, it's similar to an athlete. If an athlete is, uh, say like Tiger Woods, I've looked up Tiger Woods' strength program. Tiger Woods, he golfs righty, all right, so he's constantly in this motion. What he does to counteract and to balance himself out is he's constantly going the other way in his strength program, all right? He's doing rotational movements going the opposite direction to make sure that his stabilizers are, are sequencing, to make sure that his strength is balanced right to left, and so that he doesn't have injuries because the worst thing possible for a professional athlete that is making money doing a sport is to be on the bench. So he doesn't want to be on the sidelines. He's got to stay healthy. So let's follow someone that's the best and make sure that we're working on those imbalances. And my best um, advice to you is to work on one arm, then work on the other. Work on one leg, then work on the other. Don't always do the bilateral movements, the squats, the deadlifts, the bench press, the overhead stuff. Do separate, okay? Number two is that strength is not just lifting heavy weights. Strength is neurological. Strength is that I have a good sequencing firing pattern so that my stabilizers are firing before my prime movers. I've talked about this before. Things like my glutes firing before my hamstrings. A good example would be a squatter. The biggest fault that the best squatters have isn't strength in their legs, it's their spine. So the first fault that they have would be this pattern, okay? They'll get in this position and then they lose strength and that's when they start to fumble. That's when they start to fail. So you want to make sure that you're working on midline stability so that those muscles are firing first so that that fault doesn't happen and you're able to lift the weight. So when I say neurological, I don't mean stop lifting weights, but I do mean start working on balance, midline stability, and working on proprioceptive patterns so you have that body awareness so everything's firing in the right order. And then the last thing is constantly do assessments. I know I'm very repetitive about talking about assessments, but I'm very passionate about it. Me personally, I do my functional movement screen at the beginning of every client's program, and then I do, I work on their weaknesses all throughout their program, and I test that weakness every single day they come in. For example, I have my shoulder mobility test. Let me go ahead and show you. 